Hi, Sean. I've got to say, I love the hairstyle. Tell us about this choice for Fight Week. Uh, it just kind of happened. I wanted to do it. I think I think we had talked about doing it for my debut, actually, but I wanted to get a couple wins in UFC and then, uh, you know, uh, make a statement. Be, be Kind of get a couple wins in, in before we did it, but about two weeks ago, um, we decided to, to do it. Well, it, it certainly looks good, and it's definitely a statement. Look, you have been making a statement in the UFC so far, and you said that you want a viral knockout, a knockout that's going to go viral against Eddie Wineland. What does that look like? Talk us how, through how the perfect finish will look for you. Yeah, last, last time I said said those exact words on the viral knockout, I ended up knocking out David Nuzo in spectacular fashion. One of, in my opinion, a little biased, but one of the sweetest knockouts ever. Um, and, and I feel like this is going to be a perfect, perfect matchup for something like that come about. What makes this such a perfect matchup for you? You've said that uh, previously, you said it earlier this week, that it's the perfect opponent for you to showcase what you do. Why is that? Um, low, hands are low. He's a, he's a brawler. He's not gonna come out there and try to lay on me. Um, you know, the cage is small. He's probably gonna try to get started right away, try to be aggressive. And uh, it's kind of what Jose Quinones tried and that didn't work for him. So. Whether he, whether he comes forward and pushes pushes the action, he'll get knocked out, or or uh, if, if he lets me push him backward, he'll get knocked out. So it just, it just works out perfect. You mentioned the smaller cage. Have you had a chance to get into the, the apex, into the cage, and, and just get a feel for that different size? I mean, I know you've experienced it yourself before Contender Series, but you know, have you had another little walk around and, and got familiar with it again? Yeah, I was there this morning. I was able to uh, stand in there and it is noticeably smaller um, than, than the recent cages, but we, we spar in pretty small cages, so it, I don't think it'll play an issue. And like you said, the Contender Series was a smaller cage, and Alfred got knocked out, so I think, you know, it doesn't really matter too much the size of the cage. Now, do you think the stakes are higher for you in this fight than they are for Eddie? I mean, Eddie's been around a long time. You know, he's trying to sort of stay in amongst it. But for you, you're on this surge upwards. You know, is there a, a certain amount or a feeling that, you know, the, the stakes are high for you, especially given the other bantamweight talent that are on the, the UFC 250 card this weekend? Yeah, the, I mean, the stakes in the bantamweight division are super high right now with those with those other fights. Um, Cody, Asuncao, Aljo, and Corey. Um, but I feel like I'm kind of taking, taking a lot of the – um the hype away from those fights even which is which is good that's what i'm that's what i'm here for it's pure entertainment um and the nice thing is i have the real legitimate skill level to back it up it's not just the crazy hair and the tattoos the personalities i have legitimate high level mixed martial artist skills um so i'm excited to go out there and show that and and you know keep keep climbing up and what will a win here do for you in terms of climbing up? What sort of opponent do you think it gets you next? Have you allowed yourself to think ahead a little bit as to what name you might call out if you get that opportunity on the mic afterwards? I'm pretty good about keeping focused on, on, the, on the fight I have ahead of me, especially with Eddie um, in those little gloves. Anything could happen, but, but I, we haven't thought about too much for who's the next opponent. It kind of depends on um, you know how, how we get out of this fight. If I'm injury-free and ready to go in a couple weeks, a month, you know, we'll see who's coming off a win, and and, and uh, there's a lot of things that play out. Um, if Fight Island happens, then we can start looking at other opponents not inside the United States. So right now, you're pretty limited. Um, but I think it doesn't really matter who I fight next. It's going to be a big fight. It's going to be exciting. Um, people are going to be want to watch. So I don't think it matters too much who, who I fight next. Talking to Fight Island, is that something that excites you? It kind of depends where it's at. If it's somewhere where it's going to be super hot and just not comfortable, and I have an option, I don't know. It would be kind of hard to turn it down. Just to, just to do it once. Fight Island is going to be legendary. Um, it's hard to turn down fights in Vegas, though. If they continue to do them here, four-hour drive, have a vehicle. Um, they put us in a nice hotel this time, and it, it's hard to beat. Well, your stock and your confidence is growing all the time. We love the confidence. It's infectious. What message do you want to give to your fans that will be tuning in to watch you? Yeah, just tune in. That's it. That's all you got to do is tune in. And, uh, and it's going to be exciting. We look forward to it. Best of luck. Thank you very much. And we'll take our next questions from Agni and Georgiev with Max Sports Bulgaria. Hello, Sean. In 2017, you made four fights, two of them in UFC. 
and in the next one half years you fall just twice how to force korean talent like you or just to train and not being able to fight because of the surgery and the suspensions and how you motivate yourself during that time to stay focused in training kind of hard to hear the question could you repeat i, I got most of it just like the end of it Okay, uh, I was asking, uh, in the last two and a half years, you've got just two fights. Uh, for a young talent like you, uh, was it tough just to train without fights because of uh, the problems with the surgery and the suspensions and how you motivate yourself to do only the trainings? Um, it, it wasn't hard to continue to train for a while there. Right after you know the news that I wasn't able to fight, it was definitely a little depressing and I was... It wasn't like I was getting up in the morning excited to go to the gym. I did stay pretty consistent shortly after, but you know, a couple of weeks after I was, you know, back to okay, I'm going to fight again. I know that 100%. I'm going to eventually fight again, and I don't want it to get there. And we look back and wish I had trained and taken advantage of all this time to get better. Um, and that was my mindset for probably 95% of the whole the whole two years. Um, and, and I did have two surgeries within those two years. And, and I think those two surgeries helped me become the athlete that I was, the, the, the full potential of the athlete I could become. I think that's a huge part of why I'm so successful is how athletic I am. And I had, you know, I had some injuries that wasn't allowing me to be that athlete. Um, and then I really upped my jujitsu, my diet, my discipline and everything within those two years. So the, I really look back and think of that as a positive experience rather than a negative experience.